All right, guys, it's time to do the next update on the uh, Lexus IS300 1UZ swap. Terry's been out here slaving away on this motor, making it look really nice, uh, redoing just about everything on it, buying all new stainless steel hardware for everything, and uh, just getting ready to get this thing set into the car. So we've got the AC compressor is, is the last piece that's uh, on its way for delivery, and then once we get it, we're going to set the motor and transmission into the car. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you what Terry's been working on. So I wanted to show how clean he's got this entire freaking motor before we put the intake on there. He's been cleaning the intake. That intake looks really freaking nice right now. Uh, Remanufactured injectors, uh, new gaskets throughout. Everything's been cleaned. Vacuum lines are all new. So we're getting ready to put the intake on there. And then, uh, like I say, we've got the transmission all bolted up to it. Uh, new alternator, new power steering pump. Um, so all that's been replaced. We're waiting on the AC compressor for over here. And then uh, we'll be able to start putting belts and everything else on it. But um, we want to put the AC compressor in before we put it into the car because it's it's in a very difficult spot to reach and we also wanted the power steering pump and the alternator in there before we put it in the car i did want to mention that terry did wind up going with the oversized alternator it's a 130 amp alternator off of a sc430 and we added the extra stud and nut from lexus to bolt it in so a, a lot of people aren't very clear about that nut and bolt but we bought them off of information we got off of a forum uh i'll make sure i include the part numbers in the description of the video but you just add that stud and that nut and the 430 alternator bolts right in where the where the regular 400 uh alternator bolted in so and it's a what 20 amp bigger or 30 30, 30 amp bigger so just figured i'd share that all right so now we've got the intake mounted throttle body mounted vacuum line for the power steering uh rpm increase um, got the water lines hooked up for the throttle body. So now we're going to, um, I think we're going to break away from the motor and we're going to start replacing the, uh, pedal assemblies in the car. So he's got a brand new brake pedal and a brand new clutch pedal for this car and the mounting bracket for the clutch pedal. So we're, we are going to remove that foot pad for the brake and the assembly well no that assembly doesn't get changed just the pedal gets changed and then we're going to add the clutch assembly so hopefully you all will enjoy this so with the uh to remove the brake pedal we need to remove this little circlip right here we need to pull that circlip down and then we'll be able to pull the spring off so there's the spring removed Pull that little circlip, and then the pin will come out, and you can pull the brake pedal, or pull the master cylinder piston off, and then there's a bolt up there. You can barely see it, but up there. Take that bolt out, and then we'll be able to pull the brake pedal out. So in order to get the uh, clutch pedal assembly to mount up into the car, um, you have to remove this bracket. This bracket is an absolute nightmare to get to. I'm going to try and get it to show it. I don't think it will. Uh, let me see if I can. So that bracket is mounted right there on that hole. Right there. And you have to unbolt that because that's where the top of the uh, clutch pedal bolts into. It's a 12 millimeter. And then the bolt that goes in there is longer than the bolt that you take out. But that's holding the bracket in with, the, with that's holding all these wires right here. Um, and there's the hole for the clutch pedal assembly. So now we're going to mark where our holes go and we're going to drill the holes. And then we're going to mount the pedal in the master cylinder. All right, so I figured out the easiest way to get access to get to that top bolt for the, uh, for the pedal. Uh, let me try and get my flash to turn on so I can show this. Better. All right, so in order to get to that bolt right there, so that bolt right there, 
the easiest way to get there is to remove these these two uh, control units. They're held in with a single 10 millimeter nut right there. Take that out and then you can flip all that out of there. And then you got straight access to that bolt and you can get it in there. So now that we've got that bolt in there, I'm gonna use a transfer punch and we're gonna mark the holes on the firewall for the mounting locations for the screws. And then we'll pick up our center line for the clutch hole after that. All right, guys, it's getting a little dark out here, but wanted to show you we got the holes drilled. We're getting ready to start mounting the pedal and the master cylinder. And uh, so now we're going to go ahead and do the final install of the pedal inside of here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the bolt in in the top up there. And then we'll bolt the master cylinder through the holes in the firewall and the pedal will be installed. All right, guys, so we got the master cylinder in. We got the clutch pedal and the brake pedal installed. It's a little dark out here, but it's still early. It's only like 8.30. But we've got the brake pedal and clutch pedal installed. These two, for some reason, the nut doesn't want to go back on. So we're going to have to get a different nut and get those stuck back up in the dash. But with those out of the way, there's all the pedals. Everything's functioning the way it's supposed to. Um, now this is an 01, so we had to do a little bit different to the pedal. We had to remove all the extra button and stuff that's built onto here. And then I had to put a shim in, in the uh, pedal for the pin uh, so that it didn't have any slop in the pedal. But that's all buttoned up. So now, now that we've got that and we've got the master cylinder in the engine bay, we're going to go ahead and uh, I think as soon as the gantry shows up, once the gantry's here, we're going to start setting the motor into the car. All right, guys. So yesterday and part of last night, me and Terry were working on uh, squaring away wiring and uh, figuring out what we were going to do as far as bundling all this stuff up. I think I've got a good game plan. These are the only wires I have left to hook up. These and then the automatic transmission emulator. Um, but as we were doing that, we went ahead and changed out the throttle cable last night. So this throttle cable is out of a GS400 and it will loop across the back of the engine and meet up with the throttle body over here. It bolts in in the exact same location. Everything's the same. The only thing that you need to do is you need to use the mounting bracket that comes with the IS and not the one off of the GS because in the GS it's mounted like this and in the IS it's mounted like this and that rubber stopper has to be underneath it. So if you just take the, this bracket off of your IS cable and put it into the uh, GS cable, so this is the factory IS cable. You can see how short this thing is compared to the, to the GS300 cable. So roughly that's about where it ends is where that spacer is you've got all that extra length so it's about twice as long as the uh is cable all right guys so i've been working on trying to clean up this wiring i've got it all bundled into one bundle now um i've got all my wiring run from the alternator and the old level sensor and the o2 for uh drivers or for passenger side um they're all it's all run up through this conduit and then tied into the main loom and then I've got it all running through this main harness back here. Now, the original harness was coming out to this side. Now, everything's going to the front corner. Um, in the other car that this came out of, the battery was up in the front corner and the ECU was back here in this back corner. On the IS, the ECU's up there and the battery's back here. I'm trying to keep it that way. I'm also trying to keep the brake booster up where it belongs. So... We're going to see if everything's going to work out the way that I want it to. If it doesn't, oh well, I'll modify it, whatever I need to do. But I'm trying to keep this thing looking as factory as possible. So I'm really happy with how the wiring harness is turning out. We're going to, we're going to tie it to the uh, coolant crossover pipe right here. Uh, probably put something in here to, to isolate it so that it's not getting direct heat on it. And then uh, zip tie it to it or put some brackets on there to hold it to it. But it, it turned out really nice. So... I've just got to hook up five wires and then I've got to hook up the AC compressor and then uh, it's ready to rock and roll. We're ready to start setting it into the car. 
All right, guys, we're getting back to working on this Lexus, and uh, I've been racking my brain for the last couple hours trying to button up the last little bit of wiring. I've got like six wires left to hook up and then uh, wire in the rest of the transmission emulator, which I've got most of it wired up. Um, I've got it wired straight into the ECU connector that it's going to run to, and then I've got these are all the wires for the resistors, and uh, I just have these last couple power wires and park and low wires that have to be hooked up and uh i've got most of the wiring harness completely finished uh we've been working on making a bracket for the resistors to mount so that we don't get any check engine lights for the transmission being uh, manual instead of automatic uh getting ready to we're going to drop this motor in here tomorrow morning 100 percent guaranteed going to drop it in here tomorrow morning so yeah i'm really freaking excited now What's up guys? So we are in the process of moving the gantry crane around back so that we can put the engine into the Lexus. We've already rolled the Lexus out into the driveway. I'm gonna clean up up here a little bit to get the engine out of the, off of the back porch. Uh, still gotta mount the exhaust manifolds onto both sides with the gaskets. <clears throat> get that mounted. I think we need to run reverse light wires and rear O2 sensor wires. And then we're ready to drop it in the car. So we're gonna get the gantry back together and get it all set up. We'll remove the hood from the car and we'll get those last couple wires run and then we'll freaking drop her in. What's up everybody? And uh, we are getting ready to put the engine into the car. We've got everything prepped, ready to go. So now all what we're gonna do is we've taken the camper shell off of Terry's truck. We're gonna put the engine in the bed of Terry's truck from the engine lift over there, load it into the truck, then we're gonna back the truck up right in front of the Lexus and pick it up with the gantry crane and then roll it into the Lexus. That way we're only moving the gantry crane as little as possible because uh, it's been raining the last couple days and we don't want it to sink in too bad. But I think it's dry enough and there's enough rock out here that I think we're gonna be all right. So we're gonna try and get this engine in here today. All right, we're prepping the motor to uh, put it in the car. Getting the truck set up, got the lift set up. We're gonna back the truck up underneath the lift and load it onto the truck. Then we're gonna back the truck in front of the Lexus and unload it with the gantry crane into the Lexus. All right, so Terry just got, me and Terry just got the motor back into the freaking Lexus. Um, we're gonna check alignment of the, of the transmission shifter, which we already knew was gonna be slightly different than the 2JZ uh, AR5 swap. Um, because when we ordered when we first started taking measurements it wasn't the same but that's where the shifter lines up with the factory pontiac transmission shifter and the one uz using the factory mounting locations on the 2j cross member so the jzx uh shifter makes it too short so what we're going to wind up having to do is we're going to have to modify that shifter that's on the transmission by shortening the shaft and remilling the flat on it and then shortening the housing um but motor's in there and it's a it's a tight fit but the exhaust manifolds are on there both exhaust manifolds are on it we had them on there when we set it down in there so yeah i'm pretty excited now we now it's just hooking up wiring um and testing everything we're, we're going to get the cross member mounted and get it test fit and all that and then we will uh figure out what we're going to do with the shifter and then we'll go from there but uh yeah everything's looking good at this moment so we'll we're going to start putting a couple more things together the engine's going to come back out of the car one more time before we actually start it and drive it um we'll turn it on and see we i don't think that we'll crank it we'll turn it on and see Make sure that the dash is communicating with everything and all that. But yeah, motor's in. Pretty excited. I know Terry's excited. So yeah, we'll see what happens. So all of our wiring's hooked up. The only wiring that's left disconnected is this is for, these two are for a rear O2 sensor for the driver's side. And these are for a neutral safety switch or for the clutch pedal switch. Um, which I th believe we're going to cut further down into the like inside the cabin and and tap into them there and then these will basically be a dead connection but for the time being if we want to start the car we can hook them together and it basically will act like it's in either park or neutral 
Um, these wires right here are for the resistors, except for these two that are taped together. That's for the reverse lights. Um, we're gonna, like I said, the engine's gonna get pulled again, so that's when I'll wire up the reverse lights. I need to do some testing. Um, I don't wanna hook any, anything up and short circuit anything, so I wanna test this before I hook the wires up. Resistors, we just, we wanna run this basically down with this conduit down to this cover that Terry made. So Terry made a bracket and a cover for the resistors and they're gonna mount right here. And it's a pretty dope system. Uh, he made it just like the, uh, what is this? The uh, fuel, pump. fuel pump resistor. Yeah, the fuel pump resistor. Um, actually went and got another fuel pump resistor cover and then made the bracket at work that the cover is clipped into. And we're gonna mount all the resistors there and have all the wiring tucked up underneath here. And uh, so we just need to run these wires, these six wires over to this conduit and then run them back. So we'll probably tuck them underneath the fuel pump resistor. Probably have them running like that so that you won't see them. So, and then they'll run underneath this connector over to here, run underneath here. You won't even be able to tell they're there. But yeah, that's basically where the thing's gonna sit. We got to figure out heater hose connections. We got to figure out EVAP. Um, we got to figure out fuel pressure. And if there's, I, I don't know if this one has a return or not. I don't think it does. I think it's returnless. Uh, it looks returnless. Yeah, I think it's returnless. So we won't need the other hose. We'll just need to um, cap it off or, or put a filter on it or something. I'll have to look and see what I have to do for that. But, um, yeah she's in there and uh looking really freaking really tight but like i said both the exhaust manifolds are on there motor mounts are in their location transmissions pulled up where it's supposed to be we may be able to go a little bit higher with the transmission but we got to get the shifter sitting right first so it may tilt forward a little bit but my fear has just been confirmed and that is that the factory air intake for this motor is not going to fit because of how high the motor's sitting that motor's sitting very high compared to where the hood is so you've got a bulge in the hood but i don't think it's big enough so we'll have to set the hood back on here and see how it sits on here uh i'll put the hood on here and then i'll pick up and show a video with the hood on it and We'll see how it goes. So here's the car with the uh, hood shut. And when the hood is shut, you don't have a whole lot of room, but there is clearance. It doesn't actually hit the hood anywhere. So I think we're good. So yeah, we're gonna keep on trucking and see what we can come up with. All right, guys, so that's gonna wrap up this video for the one UZ swap. Um, as you saw at the very end of the video, engine's in. We're gonna have to modify the shifter. Um, we're just checking to see how everything else is gonna line up. We don't have a whole lot to do when we pull the motor back out, but the motor is gonna get pulled back out one more time so that we can hook up the reverse lights, we can get the shifter fixed, and then we can, uh, but right now while the engine's in there, we're gonna figure out power steering reservoir, radiator hoses, uh, all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna hook power up to it and make sure that the ignition switch turns on, that the car acknowledges that the engine's in here and everything. So that'll be the next video is just testing out, seeing what other stuff we have to fit, and then uh, possibly pulling the motor out to do those modifications and putting it back in. I'm hoping when we pull the motor the next time, it's only out for a day and we can put it right back in and then crank it up and, and see what it'll do. So we'll be able to get our measurements for the uh, drive shaft when we put it back in the next time we can't get it currently because we don't have the transmission sitting all the way up where it needs to be because the shifter's hitting the floor so we're gonna have to modify the shifter then raise the transmission up where it belongs then we'll get a measurement for the drive shaft but this thing's going along great i'm gonna get underneath it tomorrow and uh, inspect for how we're gonna run the exhaust and a little bit of different stuff check the cross member for the transmission and the transmission mount and see how all that's going to line up and we'll go from there but like always if this video helped you out in any way or if you like what you saw please like always like comment share subscribe let your friends see what i'm doing and catch you in the next video next video should be uh related to the veloster um i'm gonna work on tearing the gas tank 
rear end and uh, floor out of the Veloster and then start fitting the Genesis floor into the Veloster. So hopefully you guys will check out that video. So anyway, until next time, have a great one.